Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. We're going to be talking about when it is, and then we're going to be talking about the blessings associated with keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the punishments if we don't. We're looking here in Exodus chapter 23, which is part of the Book of the Covenant. Now, I wanted to bring this out because it is part of the covenant, which is Exodus chapter 20, 21, 22, and ends there in 23, because it mentions the three covenant feasts of the Lord. Of course, there are seven of them total, but only three of them we see here mentioned in the book of the covenant. So it is these three that are mandatory, one could say, because they are a part of the covenant. Of course, we wouldn't miss any, but we're here in the tabernacle season. So we do want to stress the importance of keeping this festival day. Now, we see these three feasts in verse 14 through 16, the first being unleavened bread, the week long feast of unleavened bread. And then we have Pentecost or the feast of weeks. That is one of the covenant feasts. And then the third one, of course, is the feast of tabernacles, that week long festival that we are talking about in this video. But notice down here in the verses that follow that it talks about this angel of the covenant here, this angel who is supposed to come and help those who actually keep the covenant. That would be the same angel that we hear about over in Daniel chapter 12 in verse one through about verse three, where it's talking about Michael, that great prince who will stand up for the children of the people. But now let's jump over to Zechariah chapter 14 and look at a few verses talking about what happens if we choose not to keep the festivals. We see here in about verse 17 that during this time, everybody is expected to come to Jerusalem and worship the king. Even those who came against the kingdom before, the Gentiles particularly, are expected to come and worship the king. We see there in verse 18 that is talking about during the Feast of Tabernacles. But we see there's particular curses there in 18 if we don't keep this festival. It says there that there's no rain. And for those of you guys that are not in agriculture and think that this is not significant, you also have to consider that rain is metaphoric of blessings. So you could actually be losing out on many blessings by not keeping this festival. But then you see that it's talking about the plague down there as well, which reminds us of what we read over there in Leviticus chapter 26. Many of those curses in that chapter may result from not actually keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. This would be a, a punishment. These people may get the punishments of Egypt. So we definitely want to be keeping the festival. So let's look down here in Deuteronomy chapter 16 to see about the blessings associated with keeping this festival. It refreshes us on some of the rules here when it's talking about rejoicing there in verse 14. We see that that's particularly important when it comes to this festival rejoicing. We read over in Leviticus 23 that we're rejoicing with palm branches. But then you see there in verse 15 that it is the result of keeping the Feast of Tabernacles that our blessings are to increase. He says by doing this, we'll get an increase in our blessings as well as blessing the works of our hands. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, letting you know when it is and why we should be keeping this festival. Look for other videos that we have on the subject and make sure you subscribe so you can see other videos as they come out. And don't forget to go back over to coachingthefight.shop, checking out all the free stuff and information that we have over there including the Celestial Clock Calendar, and I look forward to hearing from you. Shalawama.